Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Thursday, July 28th, 2016. In this video, we'll take a look at the restaurant sector. Uh, I'll keep this video relatively short. I've gone through many, but uh, I, I don't believe all of the names. I might have stated in the trading room earlier that I went through the entire list. This is the, we'll start out with the restaurant sector. Uh, in the TC2000 charting platform that I'm using here, uh, they, that's the symbol IX1320. And as you can see here from this watch list that I have, uh, these are all the components of that sector. And uh, as you can see, there's there's quite a few. Uh, so my point being that I'll cover the ones that, I, that stand out to me so far, and there might be uh, some more as I finish going through this list. And I'll start out with the short setups, and there's a couple long trade ideas, both of which I mentioned on the site recently, and I'll get to those in the end. So we'll try to keep this video under 10 minutes here. All right, this is the sector, uh, restaurant sector, and uh, what stands out to me is this. Uh, two things on this chart. We're looking at a daily time frame. Uh, as always, if I don't mention that, that's up here in the upper left-hand corner which time frame we're working off of. So this is a two-year chart, daily candlesticks, and a couple things stand out to me. That's the, so far, a double top high. We had this uh, reaction high back here in the middle of 2015, and about a year later, we had this other reaction high up here that so far has failed at that level, uh, putting in a potential double top pattern. Uh, what what leans me to the bearish side, now you can you know take any chart glass half empty, glass half full. If you're a bull saying, well, double top, it's probably going to break through that level. Maybe, maybe not. In my opinion, no, because we have a divergent high. That high was a divergent high. Had we not have had negative divergence here, and I had I seen other things on the chart, and also the fact that I'm seeing as I go through, I've gone through dozens of these names already, and I'm seeing more bearish than bullish setups, although there is a mixed bag. And uh, that's what I'll cover here today. So that's my, my intermediate term view. These are just potential support levels in the sector. Now, I don't believe, I could be wrong, I don't believe there's a ETF specific to restaurants. You might have a leisure sector or something like that that has some in there. And I could be wrong. I just haven't checked for that. Either way, as I said, uh, as going in through the charts, there are some bullish charts, and the vast majority of the charts were ambiguous to me. Um, really, I didn't have much of an opinion. So, um, in other words, if you know, even if I'm correct and the sector moves down, I can uh, have a high degree of confidence that if I go through and pick a handful, half dozen or so of the most bearish charts, um, those trades as a whole will outperform any drop in the sector, if I'm correct. Or even, let's say, they go down overall on balance and the sector even moves up. That's possible, too. So that's why I prefer it's uh, at times individual security selection versus trading an entire sector, especially if the sector itself has you know, a mixed bag of technicals. So the overall sector looks like a, it's due for a pullback. And again, these are levels. Now we'll dive into the charts that I mentioned so we can get through this. Cracker Barrel, first up, CBRL. Uh, this, I'm not crazy about this trend line, but where I pick up on this trend line in this pattern, we have to actually look at the weekly chart to get a bigger, uh, the, the longer term view on Cracker Barrel. This is a the bull market up trend line. Here's the 2009 lows. We had a react, you know, a, you know, a waterfall sell off, a little overreaction down into the lows, and I, I think this trend line has a better fit. There's a few reactions there after the initial bottom, reactions here, reactions here, reactions here. You know, one, that one candlestick just punched through, and if you look closely, you can see the body. And when I draw candle uh, trend lines, I like to capture as many bodies and or shadows on the candlestick as possible. So in this case, that body happened to line up with all those other reactions. So what you're looking at here is a primary bull market up trend line, a break of that bull market, and a back test, two back tests at this point. And then I drew this little uptrend line, which really was that same one we just looked at on the daily chart. Uh, so far, there's three reactions on it. And this line up here just marks a divergent high, you know, that's been building for looks like a little over a year now with the PPO and RSI making lower highs. So there's Cracker Barrel, bearish from a weekly perspective, breaking down below its primary uptrend line, negative divergence at the most recent high. We didn't have the negative divergence when the trend line broke, uh, although well, we had a little bit at that point, but now we have lar much larger divergence that really uh, portends a, a potential trend reversal lasting months, not just days or weeks. And uh, there's a ideal target down here around the one, 
mm, looks about 115. I'm using log scaling 118, somewhere around there. If I put it as an official trade ID, I'll certainly list targets and uh, and uh, entry points. TXRH up next. That's Texas Roadhouse. This is a weekly chart. I was already on the weekly time frame, so we'll just start there. You can see uh, a bull market uptrend line at this point. You know, you have to, on a lot of stocks, because we had a meltdown into the lows, this was an overreaction. This is where trading sort of normalized. And you can see this makes a much better fit for a trend line. So whether you want to extend it to that point or not, that's that's somewhat moot. But that's a bull market uptrend line. Numerous reactions along the way. So I, I give that trend line quite a bit of validity. And you can also see the multi-year divergent high. We had a divergent high back at uh, this point here. We did have a correction that lasted for months many months now a second divergent high same story really across the u.s equity markets in general it's just a series of more powerful divergent highs as the market inches higher and will more than likely eventually lead to a more lasting prolonged trend reversal once the uh, downtrend finally gets underway this is texas roadhouse from a daily time frame uh, rise, nice clean little rising wedge pattern here and uh, you can see the negative divergence in place on both the MACD and the RSI. So this one, we're waiting for a break, really a solid break below this trend line. It's been a little whippy. You can look at the price action. There's one little whipsaw signal there. A couple recent intraday breaks closing right back up on or above that trend line. So uh, I think the next solid break of that trend line will do the trick. And I think it'll probably come sooner than later, just looking at the uh, scope of the pattern where prices are, you know, in relation to the apex of that pattern. Uh, that would be uh, an ideal target if you wanted an earlier target for those who like pref like to, uh, prefer to take quick profits. That 4282-ish level, so set your you know buy to limit, buy to cover up there a little higher, maybe 4290, 4290 and change. Uh, but ultimately, I think it goes down to this 4101 level. And what I like about this also, this yellow uptrend line here was that long-term uptrend line and by the time texas roadhouse gets there of course assuming my analysis is correct um, which i believe it will be in this case sooner than later uh, by the time it gets there it'll probably come in at that point and i really like to see uh, i love it when i see intersecting uh, well-defined support levels uh, to use that as a target so you know the way, way this one might play out would be uh, I would expect, if things go the way I think they do, an initial reaction here. Let me use a screen draw tool. Use this little arrow tool. A little bounce there, and then finally move down there, and that would be a final target on that trade. So again, this one, not official at the time. At the time, I have to check all these trades for earnings, and um, we'll likely be adding some exposure to the restaurant sector soon. Pizza, PZZA, Papa John's. Papa John's, nice little bearish rising wedge, very well-defined trend line. Look, numerous reactions. This thing has just walked up that trend line uh, and ran right into resistance. You have this previous reaction high, uh, some other reaction highs, some candlesticks here. Uh, you had some reactions from above over there. So a pretty, pretty decent resistance level. The next, if it punches through there, the next resistance, actually, I should put a line. You can put one right here. And this is just to give an idea for those of you that might want to take these in advance of uh, these being posted as official trade ideas. Uh, you have, you can see the reactions, why I put that line there. There's some reactions on both sides of what looks sort of like a mini head and shoulders pattern up there. Uh, that would be your next resistance. And then finally, the... Uh, the uh, previous reaction high up there. And uh, ideally you want to wait for a break below this rising wedge or this uptrend line here and your targets are down here. And I'm just pointing on the actual support levels set your buy to cover orders a little above that. 66.14 was that level and this one's 61.24. All right, and I think we already looked at did we look at this one on the weekly? No, maybe we didn't. Uh, if you can make it out, there's that. This one happens to come right off the bottom of the 2009 lows, or actually late 20, 2008, right at the bottom of that candlestick. I know I have volume bars there that make it maybe a little hard to see that in the video. And then we come in here, reaction, here's a reaction, and that again is that trend line. So that looks to me ideal. Uh, way. Now, if Papa John's pushes higher, which is a possibility. We don't have a divergent high. If we come and take out, match or take out that previous reaction high from 2015, as I mentioned, uh, there's a potential at this point, uh, again, just a potential to put in divergence on the weekly chart. Um, and that's pretty significant divergence. Uh, it's not there yet. 
meaning the stock still has the potential to go ahead and bust on through there and burn through these divergences and, and negate them or take them out. But uh, something worth mentioning, and that would just help reinforce a longer-term bearish case, especially if the broad market's rolled over at that point. Sonic, uh, Sonic, not crazy about this daily chart, so I must have something on the weekly. Yeah, here it is. All right, here's a trend line off the 2012 lows, early 2012, pretty well defined. We had a breakdown. You can see the story on Sonic is a double top high. We have highs, reaction highs here from 2014 and a uh, reaction high from earlier this year. And uh, this would be this large area uh, when you have a double top pattern. If prices do break to the downside, this is your double top basing range and your trigger, longer term trigger, is a break down below the bottom of the range. Now I drew it that way. Uh, this probably could be drawn a few different ways, but we had quite a few reactions right here. So that that's the one I'm going with. And again, this would be for a longer term bearish outlook. So that would be your, your base. And the way a double top pattern works is you take the distance from the top of the pattern down to the bottom and then you add that to where prices break down and that gives you your measured target so that would be quite bearish but more near term looking at this uptrend line break and maybe just a uh, a move down for those of you just looking not to hit a home run or a grand slam at least you want a double or a single uh, I mean a single or a double go ahead and maybe short a break of that trend line and then cover on that support right around 23. All right next one up Arco ARCO uh, we're on a weekly time frame, and just you can see a very nice uh, downtrend line. We only have three reactions, but it's pretty clear that uh, the stock is very extended just to get up to this trend line. That's what I like about it. So from my experience, even if prices manage to break out here, there'd be a very, very good shot. At the, at the least, the stock would have to come in and back test. At the most... Uh, it might break down and fail any breakout, or it may turn off here. So far, we've rejected. You can see the little red candlestick there. And again, that was a quite an extended move just to get there. That was a 170% run. The RSI on the weekly time frame is extremely overbought. And let's take a look at the daily chart. And this brings it all in. This really helps your timing. It's hard to uh, establish an entry or an exit based solely on the weekly chart. That formulates a bigger picture. Then I come down to the daily and 60-minute charts to really hone down on my entries and exits. And on this one, we have a very nice uh, bearish rising wedge pattern, which again, remember, runs right into that longer term downtrend line we don't see it here on the week on the daily time frame we had negative divergence helping to confirm the bearish nature of this rising wedge uh, there was a reaction there there's a gap right here uh, reaction here reactions here so i you know pretty decent trend line resistance or horizontal resistance as well so double resistance if you call it with that long-term downtrend line in this horizontal level and um, stock so far has rolled off that level and uh, will likely break down below this wedge and my initial target minimum target would be 410 now the stock's 551 i mean if you wanted to get aggressive you short it here 551 552 and you short it down to that 411 area that's a 25 percent drop so not bad and uh, let's try to quantify your risk reward rr and we're at 552 again i've just missed that 551 level I'll drag up here and what i'm doing folks i'm looking in the box in the upper left hand corner and there's a percentage tool so let's say your stop was a little bit above that line i would give it a little room over 604 so now you're talking a you call it a 10 percent drop for a you know 25 plus percent gain that's a 2.5 to 1 rr uh, not bad so maybe you want to put your stop a little tighter a little closer to that level in there and you know if you brought that stop down to about seven or eight percent then you have a, a pretty uh, objective you know three to one or better rr and keep in mind that's the initial price target if things in the sector or in this particular stock get ugly and that level goes um there i should clarify there's probably other levels along the way where I'd expect reactions but ultimately I could see the possibility of that stock going back down to this level uh, that two you know 260 ish where is that 257 yeah 260 roughly okay just two more on the short side and we'll touch on the longs real quick and wrap this up uh, taste t-a-s-t -T, Carol's restaurant group let's see Okay, uh, let's start out on the weekly chart first. All right, here's a weekly chart at bottom, like a lot of the restaurants back in late 20, 
2008 and pretty well pretty well defined uptrend line especially from that point we didn't have any reactions up until here and then we have quite a few so very well defined in this area and that just happens to line up perfectly with that 2008 low so this is a long-term uptrend line that uh, based on this weekly divergent high here you can see the negative divergence on the PPO and RSI that was just put in my guess is at minimum that stock before all said and done will visit revisit and have another test to this trend line that that weekly divergence also tells me there's a good chance that may go. And if you look at it from this scaling or this longer term perspective that we're at, you see this nice little bear flag here, bearish pennant, more like a bear flag off there. So if that if that sucker breaks down and plays out, you just take the move down, you take the flagpole, which I might have overshot it just a hair. That's the flagpole. You add it to the highest point of the flag, and that would project down to that uh, around that 970-ish area. And let's look at the daily chart. And there's there's taste on the daily chart. This, I believe, is that same long-term downtrend line. There's a divergent high. We saw that same divergent high, I believe, on the weekly chart. MACD is just now, especially that signal line, the 9 EMA is just now struggling with that zero line which may act as resistance. It often does when tested from below. So if we roll over soon, and uh, at the very least, we never, this was an unfulfilled uh, significant support zone. We had a big gap back here. You can see this gap from early in the year, back in, I'm sorry, late, late uh, 2015, back in August, August 5th, it looks like. And that gap was backfilled at that point, backfilled once more, touched again. You know, this is a pretty solid, support level where am i going with this when you see a move like this you know important support levels to me act like a magnet or a black hole once prices get close enough they think almost it's almost like gravity that tends to to pull them in and it came close but it never touched it here so i wouldn't be surprised in fact i'd favor at least a thrust down to tag that trend line even if the stock is going to go on and continue higher or even chop around sideways for a while and also note here that that long-term uptrend line comes in right at this point if you go forward a little bit in time those lines intersect and that would be somewhere around uh, the end of September early uh, early October of this year so maybe it takes that long to get there maybe not we'll see T-A-C-O. Uh, okay, this one daily time frame, last uh, short setup. Uh, here's one that's very extended. Uh, Del Taco restaurants. It had a run of about you know 30 percent of uh, without hardly any give back, just to get up to this downtrend line. That downtrend line generates off the 2015 highs, a couple reactions there, and a reaction with a momentum overshoot. I often talk about momentum overshoots when you have a very very strong momentum heading into a resistance level or on the downside into a support level. It's very common to see prices temporarily overshoot and you see that thin part of the candlestick that's called a candlestick wick or shadow and that shows that prices pierced through their intraday but failed to close they close back down uh, on or below that uh, resistance that intersecting resistance level so there you have a stock failing at dual or intersecting resistance levels while extremely overbought on the daily time frame you can see that down here on the rsi pretty well very well defined or pretty well defined resistance I should say and um, just looks like it may have to come back in a little and if it comes back in my target on that one would be right around there a little bit set your buy to cover a little above the 1020 area doesn't sound like much but a drop from 1057 down to 1018 where it's at that's almost four percent so not a monster trade but again this one might have more to go and i you can see from the candlesticks here, it's a relatively new company that just shows thin trading so that you don't even bother with a weekly chart on this one. Not one of my favorite, just last one I wanted to point out. In fact, I had a question mark by that one on my watch list, meaning I'm not that sure of it. Long side, I mentioned the other day, I had a trade alert go off here, a price alert over this trend line on Dave, famous Dave's. It's a thinly traded stock, be careful with that, but it already ran about 10% from that point. And, um, I didn't put it as an official trade idea. A couple of reasons. Very thin. I've had this one on before. We made money and had a couple, I think, more losing trades on this one than winning trades. And especially recently, we've had some great shorts up here. But it's been tough uh, over the last couple of trades on this one. 
uh, and again, it's thinly traded. That means when there's a lot of volume the other day after the breakout, there was a lot of volume. I saw the spreads widen up within a couple pennies, you know, a penny or two. That's fine. But then when trading, when the volume dries up, the spreads can be wider quite a bit. And you want to then use limit orders. Don't use a market order on a stock with a big spread. They'll, that's just an invitation for the market makers to take advantage of you. Uh, best to use a limit order. Maybe split the difference and go a little closer. If you're buying the stock, go a little bit closer to the ask price You know, from the midpoint. And if you're selling the stock, go a little closer to the bid and you're more likely to get a fill. Um, on that uh, on that order and uh, again if dave continues to build on those gains the first target is 675 this one's been you know this one's been chopped in half and then some much more than a 50 percent drop about 85 percent drop and uh, a lot of upside if things turn around in the company i uh, don't i looked and i didn't see a earnings date announcement i went to dave's website on the corporate investor information I'll check the internet so it's just expected look based on where they last reported um, they're probably going to report within the next two to three weeks here. Uh, so you got to be careful with that because that can go either way. And if they take out that 675 area, it looks like clear sailing um, to me all the way up to 823 or so, possibly that $9 area. And then again, ultimately, if this company can turn around uh, 1130, a nice divergence into the low and everything else you want to see on the stock all right and the last one i pointed this one out today on the front page of the site oh, it's actually moved up since then this is kona grill kona grill um yeah they just reported and they actually reported a loss and that loss actually was uh, below expectations but yet this just shows you it doesn't matter what the what the results are it's the market's reaction so whether they said something rosy in their conference call whether this is short covering whether this is uh you know the smart money you're reading through the numbers and saying the worst is over but bottom line and i talk about this often that more often than not uh, if a chart pattern is clearly bullish or bearish going into earnings, that is the way the earnings go. Now, again, I always say this more often than not doesn't mean always just because I had a bearish rising or falling wedge pattern with confirmed with bullish divergence doesn't mean every single time that company is going to go up, whether regardless of what they report. I'm just telling you from my experience, if I see a clearly bullish or bearish chart pattern, then more often than not. I'll see the stock, uh, even if it's not that initial reaction immediately following earnings. I'm talking when the, the next day, few weeks going forward from that point. So Kona, you know, and I put it up, we were right on that level. And you can see this is a one minute chart. It's consolidated. It, it hung to that trend line like glue all day. I mean, you can see the stock <laughs> literally was trading within a range of just a couple pennies all afternoon. Finally, it's starting to take some volume here as I'm doing this video. It took volume in the morning. And you can see the volume bar is increasing, and it's now broken above that trend line. So that that's bullish. Um, you know, you can certainly go long with a stop back below your entry point, which gives you minimal downside. You don't want to see it fail back below that uh, level. In fact, if you really want to zero in, if you're trading, this is where that $12, 12 level. See that? We ran up there. And there were a couple reactions that would take us back down below the trend line and as well as you can see the volume of histogram bars this is where all the trading went all day most of the day the majority of trades so if we fall back below 12 most of the people that bought today will be wiped out and that's bearish so that's 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 what you can do with that one take a take it long with a stop not too far below the 12 dollar level so you're at 1261 right now and um that first target minimum targets 1326 I would say right around that 1410 area would be the next target. Um, but keep in mind that overall right now I have, I just made in the beginning of this video, a, a case for the bearish outlook in the sector. Um, so take that for what it's worth. In other words, you know, there's some headwinds if the restaurant sector is moving down. However, Kona's already experienced a bear market. You know, that stock is down uh, what is that? 65%, you know, in what a year or so. So maybe the worst is over on that. And, uh, it is possible for a sector drop. There's always going to be some stocks that are going up while a sector's falling or vice versa. So those are the ones that stand out now. And, uh, just be, uh, be uh, aware that if I do add some of these as official trade ideas soon, or you take any of the ones that I just mentioned, uh, that I may add more. So always leave room if you are bullish or bearish on the restaurant sector or any sector that i'm covering actively uh you know allocate ahead of time say i want a let's say 
20% exposure to that sector in my portfolio. So if I put out the first trade idea, don't put 20% of your portfolio into that stock. Maybe say, okay, I'll, I'll spread it amongst four names. So I'll put 5% in each name. And you take 5% on that first trade and the next three that come along, you add 5% and there's your 20% exposure. Uh, you know, that's all about diversification, asset allocation, all that good stuff. All right, guys, this has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and I only uh, doubled my, uh, actually, two and a half times what I wanted to do in this video time-wise. I'm looking at the 25-minute mark here, so one day I'll get these below 10 minutes. Hope you enjoyed it.